Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear God. As a mo mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. Marion Worth Beecham Jr. was born on Easter Sunday, April 9th, 1944. The son of the late Elizabeth Wirtz Beecham and Marion Worth Beecham Sr. Buster died on Easter Monday, April 1st, 2024. Next Tuesday, Buster would have turned 80 years old. We gather today to remember Buster's good life and to share our sadness at losing him too soon. But more than memory and mourning, we gather to give witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to the hope and assurance we have in him that we too will be raised, that we will be reunited with those that we love, and that Buster Beecham, who was baptized and professed his faith in Jesus Christ, will be with the Lord forever. Let us join together in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Come to me, says the Lord, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Our hymn is number 238, Thine is the Glory.
may be seated. As we prepare now for the reading of scripture, please join me in prayer. O oh God, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts. In the stillness of this hour, speak to us of eternal things, so that hearing the promises in scripture, we may have hope and be lifted into the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear now God's word from Proverbs 3, verses 3 through 6. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them round your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. I now invite you all to join me in a unison reading of Psalm 23, which is printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the New Testament, we read from the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter 8, beginning in verse 28. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who did, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel of John in chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. This is the last chapter of the Gospel of John. 
It is a story uh, that happens after Jesus has been raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. May the Lord bless to our hearing these portions of God's holy word. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Loyal is a word that rose to the top of the conversation with Buster's family this week as we reflected on the deep goodness of his life. He was loyal to God, to his family, to his friends to his church, to his community, and of course to his teams, <laughs> the Gamecocks, the Red Raiders, the Braves, and the many fourth pres basketball teams that he coached over the years. Buster's great loyalty was a sign of the great love he held in his heart, yes, in his heart, that he gave so freely to so many people in his life, as is testified here today by your presence. He demonstrated his love and loyalty by his generosity of time and attention. Buster was always there for Penny, for Worth, and Libba, and Wells, as well as for his children's spouses, Laura, and Lewis, and Megan, who knew that he loved them as if they were his own children. Oh, and I should also mention the dogs and the grand dogs, and for that matter, the stray dogs and cats that Buster that wandered into Buster's life and he would care for. You know, I've been trying to remember the first time I met Buster, and I'm usually pretty good at that with people, but I can't quite pinpoint the time. It's almost as if he gradually emerged into my awareness and then he was there. <laughs> and I think that makes sense for Buster. He was a man of few words. He was there but never really drew attention to himself, except for the occasional well-timed one-liner and always drew a good laugh with those. I was fortunate to work with Buster on the session uh, as a member and then as the chair of the personnel committee at Forth. And as soon as he rolled off the session, he accepted a call to serve on the diaconate and on the committee that coordinates the ushers, uh, and he loved to serve as an usher. I think he just loved to help people in general, which is probably what kept him working until, until, until he was almost 80 years old, until the very end. Buster was described by those who knew him as larger than life in a quiet way, or as, quoting here, one of the great quiet ones. Among his kids' friends, Buster was something of a legend. Not only did he coach so many of them, whether on Greenville High's boys or girls' soccer teams, for which he uh, earned, I think, three state rings. They earned, he, he led them to earn or uh, for all the fourth pres basketball teams, boys and girls that he coached, and I'm told he, he coached the inaugural girls team at fourth pres. And of course, many of you know Buster was something of an institution with Red Raider football, serving on the sidelines as part of the chain gang for something like 25 years, long after his own kids had graduated. 
So it's not surprising that the very first thing his family said about him when we gathered, I believe it may have been Worth who said it, was that Buster was always present. He was always interested, which he showed by asking questions and knowing the details about his kids' and grandkids' lives and others around him. When Jesus asked the disciple Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. I believe Buster Beecham loved the Lord deeply. And I believe this because of the way he showed it, by feeding the lambs God gave him, by his abiding presence, his quiet strength, his enthusiastic interest, his generosity with his time, his always showing up to coach, to watch, to cheer, to serve, to love, and support. Buster Beecham fed the lambs God gave him. And Buster was here in the last week of his life, on, in here in this sanctuary on Palm Sunday for the baptism of little John Wells Beecham, who looked up with that angelic face and peered into heaven as he received the sign of the cross and the assurance of his baptism. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, marked as Christ's own forever. Indeed, Buster Beecham was sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. And our Lord has now welcomed Buster home. He has received Buster's loving heart and soul and mind into God's eternal realm, where Buster now enjoys his eternal rest and knows the full joy and peace of life with the communion of the saints. And in our quiet moments at church, at home, on the field, at the beach, enjoying good southern summer food, maybe with a Bloody Mary or a wee dram of scotch, <laughs> we will gradually become aware that Buster is there with us, his strong, quiet presence still with us in the communion of the saints. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite uh, David and Wells, or Wells and David, forward uh, to share some remembrances of the family. Uh, before I begin my remarks today, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of my family, to all of our friends and extended family, for the tremendous amount of love and support that you have showed us over these last several days. It has been nothing short of amazing, and you've made this incredibly tough time so much easier for us to get through. So as I started thinking about my father's life and how I would like for him to be remembered, I began to think about how he would like to be remembered, uh, and really how, how any of us would like to be remembered. Of course, we all want to know that we left the world a better place than we found it, that we had a lasting positive impact on those around us, and that we loved and that we were loved. I can say with the absolute certainty that Buster checks all of those boxes, especially that last one, and that is what I want my dad to be remembered for most. But I will come back to that one for the sake of keeping this light and in an effort to help me get through this. So I'd like to focus on some other things that I know Buster would like to be remembered for. I know that he would want to be remembered for his perseverance and his loyalty. He'd like everyone to know that he always remained steadfast, and even when there was overwhelming evidence that success was unlikely, he would stay the course. Because see, Buster was a fan of the South Carolina Gamecocks. <laughs> if you're familiar at all with that school's athletic program, then you know there is no athletic program on earth that will test your patience, disappoint you, and really just let you down. However, Buster always remained loyal to the Gamecocks. No matter what the previous Saturday's result, he was always there, ready to pull them through again the following week. My dad would also like to be remembered for his intelligence. And actually, on the day that he got sick, he got the wordle correct on the second guess. And I know he would appreciate me mentioning that here today. 
There are some other things I'd like to mention regarding how I remember Buster, like some of the life lessons that he taught me. For instance, you should always pick your Sunday brunch spot based on that restaurant's quality of Bloody Mary. He also taught me that country music doesn't get any better than George Jones, John Prine, Merle Haggard, and Willie Nelson. He also had the belief that modern country music is absolute garbage. <laughs> and I think we all can agree on that. Dad had some other very strong opinions on music, like any hymn written after 1850 wasn't worth singing, and he wouldn't. He literally would sit there in the pew in silent protest while the rest of the congregation just sang along. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, the thing I want to, my dad to remember for most is how much he loved and how much he was loved. My Aunt Cindy once said, if Buster loves you, he's going to spoil you. Now, I'm fairly certain the context of that quote was in response to how much people food my dad was feeding our dog at the time. <laughs> but it definitely spills into over other aspects of his life. My dad loved his family and friends. There wasn't anything he wouldn't do for the people that he loved. Buster was the best dad that worth Lily and I, <clears throat> I knew this was going to happen, could ever have asked for. As someone who recently became a father, my hope is that one day I'm half as good a dad as he was. If my son loves me just a fraction as much as I love my dad, then I'll know that I was a good father. Now, if you knew my father well, you know, right now he's saying, y'all don't make a big fuss about me. <laughs> well, Buster, I'm sorry to disappoint, but we're going to throw a huge party to celebrate your life. I love you. I miss you, and I look forward to the day we meet again. Our sister, Ann, is who prevailed upon me to offer a sibling's perspective about our brother, Buster, today, <clears throat> despite my protesting. Buster certainly knew, as does our brother, Brian, that when Ann tells you to do something, <laughs> it's just easier if you shut up and do it. <laughs> and that's something that I think all of these generations of Beecham's gathered know. I'm over 11 years old, old, excuse me, I'm over 11 years younger than Buster. So he and I didn't spend a lot of time growing up in the same house simultaneously. My recollections of him as an older sibling to me are of someone who was, well, just a little bit strange. <laughs> he was serious, that point's been made, always serious. And he was a great student. He finished second in his high school graduating class. And even though a young tyke at the time, I can still picture him at our home in Barnwell, late in the evening, carefully poring over schoolwork by himself. He liked being by himself. In the living room after football practice. Oh yeah, Buster was an athlete. Just not a very good one. <laughs> but that didn't stop him from trying and it did turn him into a relentless fan of almost every sport. Both Gamecocks, Terriers, Braves, and Red Raiders. And did I mention that most observers of Buster over the years would agree that, well, he was maybe a little bit strange. <laughs> All of us were, were aware of that fact as a teenager, and that lasted well past his college years, that Buster was absolutely paranoid about anybody looking at him for more than a second or two. We all, even our parents, lived in fear of being accused of staring at Buster. <laughs> And he was strange, so we were staring at him. <laughs> so until Buster was an adult, we pretty much knew to steer clear and give him plenty of room. Most of you today have known Buster as an adult, maybe during Wofford in the 1960s or law school at South Carolina shortly thereafter, and then uh, after the start of an over 50-year career in trust administration and management, first in Columbia and their Columbia friends here, and then, of course, in Greenville. Those who knew Buster at Wofford or at law school or both or as a young or even for that matter, old trust officer, you knew someone who was, well, maybe a little strange, but very lovable 
and in fact, again, as has been made, the point's been made several times, much beloved. In what has become obviously a recurring theme, Buster was serious, studious, and a hard worker. He was private and for the most part, quiet until somebody cranked up the music and then he turned into Gene Gene the Dancing Machine. <laughs> Anybody here who has been to a wedding reception with him in the last 50 years or even to a TNB financial work retreat in more recent times can attest to his love for shaking his um, er, um, 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 uh, leg <laughs> and even with karaoke to boot. One of his TNB colleagues texted me a couple of days ago to say that Buster was the life of the party in their company. He was the life of the party and his family, too. If maybe just a little bit strange. <laughs> as his family and especially as his sibling, ever since we reached full adulthood, Buster has been our big brother, sure, but he's been more our dear and devoted friend and advisor. Since our parents died 24 and 15 years ago, respectively, the four of us and our spouses have enjoyed numerous times together each year, filled with good food, maybe occasionally some good alcohol, and more laughter and good times than you can imagine. Sure, the rest of us, siblings and spouses, Penny included, still would catch ourselves remarking sometimes just how odd Buster could be, like maybe when he would defiantly and persistently try to light a cigarette out on the beach at Litchfield in 20 mile an hour winds <laughs> with his head completely covered in a towel. But we learn to accept that kind of behavior and actually love it. Probably said too often about too many people, Buster was one of a kind. He usually did a really good job of masking his emotions. And he certainly wasn't an overly sentimental or demonstrative type, except as Wells has already pointed out, when showing his disdain for hymns written after 1850. But we're all aware of how much he loved and enjoyed his family, Penny, his three children and their spouses, and the seven grandchildren, and his siblings and our spouses and kids. We'll never stop remembering this brother who was, well, maybe a little strange, but truly beloved and unforgettable. We celebrate his life today, and we're reminded by his passing that each day, is a precious gift from God. And we need to cherish our time as no length of time is guaranteed. We thank all of you for being here today. What an outpouring of love and support for this family. And today we truly give thanks and praise to our all-knowing God for the great life and example given to us by Buster Beecher. Please join me now in a time of prayer. Holy God, Lord of life and death, you made us in your image and you hold us in your care. We thank you for your servant, Buster, for the gift of his life and for the love and mercy he received from you and gave to us. Love that shaped him into the husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, deacon, elder, colleague, coach, and friend we've all known and loved. We thank you for his heart of gold that was filled with patience and attentiveness and compassion, for the ways that he shared those traits with everyone, and especially with those he loved most, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, his siblings, his whole large family, which was a gift from you. We ask that you comfort them in their grief, abide with them in every moment of memory and longing, and help all of us to hold space for them in the days ahead. We thank you for the constant gleam in Buster's eye, 
an indication of a youthful spirit and a healthy sense of humor. We thank you for his dedication to his earthly work, both professional and volunteer. We pray that his legacy continues to make an impact on all of the people and places he touched, including this place, his church home. With the good news of Easter still fresh in our hearts, we thank you for Jesus Christ and his victory over death and for the assurance that Buster's baptism is now complete and that he has entered the joy you have prepared. Give us faith to see, beyond touch and sight, some sure sign of your kingdom. And where vision fails, help us to trust your love, which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Jesus Christ that we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You will find, you will find in your bulletin four verses of a hymn that Buster would sing, <laughs> that I'm pretty sure was written before 1850. So as we sing this together, let our memories of Buster draw us nearer to God.
invite you all to join me in the commendation that is printed in our bulletin. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Buster. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. After we receive the benediction, the family would like me to let you all know that you are welcome to join them um, at the uh, home of, of Lewis and Libba, uh, and the address there is in your bulletin. It is six or eight? Eight. Eight Waccamaw Court in Greenville. Waccamaw Circle. Eight Waccamaw Circle in Greenville. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one of you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 